Okay, I was going to do a little update here of the latest modifications I've done. I can't run it because, well, as you can see, the ground is soaking wet. There's water in the parking lot. All the wood up on the hill is wet. And I don't have any cut up. I burned it yesterday. Huh, even my bucket's wet. Anyway. And this thing, you can tell it's been hot. But yesterday, after I ran it, I actually moved it around a little bit on wood gas. I drove it up the road and back. And it it did pretty good, actually, uh, considering that uh, I ended up developing a leak and also the heat, which I still haven't got my side pipes i hate to put pipes down the side of the bed for the fact that i like to reach over the side of my bed and get stuff and i don't like having to come all the way around to the end sometimes i gotta hurry up and grab something out when i'm uh flagging or something so i'm wanting to put a brush guard on the front for a cooler because i think that would work a whole lot better but anyway had everything going and for probably about four and a half to five hours after I had the truck shut off and sitting here there was still smoke coming out and I could start the truck back up on gasoline and then switch over and it would sit and idle on it um, I would probably have to add more fuel and stuff or get the whole process restarted to actually drive it but I didn't try it i just kind of i'd come up come out here every now and then i'd fire it up on gas and then switch over and it seemed like it worked good um every time i turn it off of course a little column of smoke came out of all of those i have all of them uncapped now because i couldn't get any power out of it with those capped off so i had to have all four of them uncapped now and it seems to do better um I'll show you the modifications that I've made. Okay. I took in the fuse box right here. You can see. Maybe you can see. Yeah, there it is. Okay. There are two wires coming out of the injector fuse. That is a blown fuse. Those two wires go back. Back in here and up to my little box. Also, I have wires run under the hood for some servos to work my well one servo to work my butterfly valves in my wood gas carburetor now when you turn it on as you can see now the red light's on that means right now there's a contact pulled in in that box right now a little relay and it runs down through those wires across there and I want to put my lid back on if I can find it but I don't know where it's at anyway um, it connects those two wires there's also a fuse holder back in there um, it's an inline fuse holder and it's behind the dash now when I when this is in a red position it clicks a relay connects the fuel injectors and lets them run now when I flip it over to here as you can see it went green now it's running on wood and that is disconnected the fuse is disconnected so now there's no power to the fuel injectors and also something interesting out here I'll show you how I did the actual servo Okay, here is my servo and my relays. I know it looks like a mess. Um, I'm going to find a small box to put it in. And then it'll neaten everything up. But see, this wire runs into the cab and across to the box. Whenever you 
push the button on the wood gas it hits this limit switch when it pulls this servo pulls in this awful little radio control car and it pulls the butterfly valve for the wood gas open at the same time a rod runs over and I've bent and tweaked it you can see where it's all bent up until I got it right this one changes my air and as you can see right now it's uh, pointing I guess a little more toward the open but about in the middle something like that okay whenever well let me sit this camera out here see if I've got a picture of it here if I can sit it somewhere where it will actually show it bear with me for a second here probably see some movement there I know I'll put it right over here that way you'll be able to watch the entire movement and I'll flip the switch on the inside Now that you can see how this little mess works. Of course, I have two limit switches. These are out of an old microwave. One of them on this side for when it is closed. As you can see, it's on the C. When it's closed, pushes that limit switch in, stops the servo. And this one, when that valve is open, that arm comes up and it hits that limit switch and that turns the power off to the relay or to the uh, servo and I have two relays they were a little bit different as you can see one of them is smaller one of them actually is an air conditioner relay um, out of a little Chevrolet car which the air conditioner doesn't work anyway and I had to modify it because it only had the normally open part with the with a connection on it so I had to drill and make my own connection for the normally closed part and these are alternating relays I have them hooked up the opposite of each other so that when they kick in and out it changes the polarity between these two limit switches like if I were to kick the relay right now it would power this limit switch right here and it would send a signal through to the servo to pull it this way yeah it's a basic explanation of it but anyway it does work um, and it it switches back and forth pretty good because the instant that you turn that off the injectors automatically turn on at the same time and after fooling with the linkage from one to the other I have the mixture finally set right and I would like to be able to show it in action because it will run uh, I'm getting a little moisture though I still think my idea of running the pipe out the front up on the grill and across and back down I love that idea because it'll make me a little push bar too I mean, I won't really be able to push anything with it, but it'll look like it, and it will cool it. It won't. It won't be intrusive as the bars going down the side would be. I really do not want to put bars down the side if I can avoid it. While I was running it, though, I developed a leak on this connection, so I'm going to have to work on that now. But other than that one leak everything seemed to be working fine I just need to cool it a little more I did find out that um, 
I got that tree cutting company to dump me some wood chips out and they are too versatile in size there's too many different sizes I guess if I could sort them out it would work better I think if I can get them all about that size or so which there's a lot of them that size I need to make some kind of uh, way to sort it but if I can do that I got a lot of fuel right there I did find out if you just put it in there like that though it bridges really really bad it, it'll bridge off before you know it but anyway that is so far the progress that I've made it does run I wish I could show it but I've burned up all my wood playing around with it yesterday and driving it up and down the road and it's too wet now I should have thought ahead a little bit but or I should have at least filmed it but I was excited once it started working good once I had my little button working but that's the basic update that I've got for now thank you for watching again